Well, hey, everybody, welcome to the Martha Munizzi podcast. I am so excited because, you know, when we do this podcast, we just jump right in. We don't want to waste any time. Um, but I've got my twin sister, Mary Alessi, and she is with me today. And guys, I, I, oh, and before I even get started, in our room today, in this room, we're actually in my house, um, my our other sister is Thank here. You. Our mother is in the room. So you might hear, you know, some chatter and some voices shouting us a little bit down. Hopefully over there, ladies will give us the a little bit. The corner over there. Corn- no, they're looking at each other like we're not <laughs> saying a word. Uh, but anyway, so we're we're just going to have fun. Yeah. Uh, because that's what we do as a family. We love to just sit. We love to talk. We love to debate. We love to preach at each other. Yeah. And we just, we just have fun. So that's what we're going to do for the next few minutes. I don't even know how long this is going to last, but we're going to try to... Well, I have a timer on that's supposed to stop us at some point. At but some point. It's a timer that's just running luck. up. It's not even running down. It's like running up. Anyway, <laughs> we cannot wait. And we've had some really good conversations uh, with some of my other guests that I've been on with before, but this is really special for me because uh, we're going to be talking about something that is something that's kind of a hot topic in some yeah. ways, and that's women in ministry and women in mm. leadership it yes. shouldn't be a hot topic, no. but unfortunately, in some circles, it is. And I find a lot of young women yeah. uh, that when my daughters went to college and then their friends would say, hey, talk to your mom because I don't know where I fit. And women that just don't know yeah. what they're allowed to do, what scripturally, what are, what are we allowed to do? Um, and so there's a lot of questions out there, there are. about it. But you and I have kind of just ignored the questions. We're not really worried <laughs> about people's opinion. Because we just know God's called us yeah. and we do what we're called to do. That's and right. now we're pastoring. You've been pastoring with your husband for many, many years. My husband and I have started pastoring in the last few years. And we, we, we pastor along with our adult children. So oh, we, y'all, Jesus, listen to me. Jesus. We have, <laughs> pray, pray for us. We've got pray a saints. lot to talk about. We <laughs> can tell y'all some stuff, okay? And they could probably tell y'all some stuff too, but they they're don't have the microphone. Po- they do not, and they're not invited to this podcast right now. So <laughs> another, they can have their own. Sorry, guys. But I want to help some people. Yes. I want to encourage too. some people, some women who are in leadership right. that don't really know what their role is. They don't know what the boundaries are. Maybe they're in a church setting where the pastor is open to it, but he doesn't know what oh, to do. Goodness, yeah. Maybe they're not open to it. What is the criteria? What is what are the the boundaries? You know, um, I want to talk about that a little bit. I want to start with a question to you about that. Let's do it. Can we start now? That we're, we have officially started. We have started. Okay, the red light is on. The red I want to ask on. you the question. Do you remember <laughs> when you were in your twenties? You were newly married. So was I. Right. Baby on your hip, mm-hmm. wanting so much to do something for the kingdom. You had a great talent to sing and write songs but you were still developing that right wasn't fully developed yet but you we grew up singing with our mom and our sister and our dad all our lives so ministry was what we knew we wanted to do what we were called to do right so that we knew that wasn't a question the calling was absolute we were called into ministry but do you remember those feelings and i know it's been a long time and jesus has healed us yes but what it what it felt like as a young woman newly married embarking not only in, towards your calling, because we knew we were called, we just didn't know how that calling would play out, right. which is what we all deal with. So mm-hmm. we all face when we're called into ministry. I know I'm called, but how does this play out? Where does it take me? I know what I think I see and I hope right. I see, but how do I get there? And as a young woman in ministry, there are seemingly, it has seemed like there's only certain roles you can step into right. as a woman. Right. Um, do you remember... The struggle you used to have, like yeah. the feeling you used to feel and the hindrances that you used to go through? I do. And I think a lot of it, looking back on it now, was, you know, I had a husband that would never make excuses. Right. He would never let me, me make excuses. He would never, he, he was never weird about, you know, yeah. my uh, abilities. He, he was always pushing me. Yeah. And to the point of almost making me cry sometimes and right. saying, stop shrinking back. But I got married young. I had my children very young. But even in that, you know, my gift made room for me right. in churches and in ministries that I would sing in or lead worship in, and which was great. But I had my own inadequacies, yeah. my oh, own yeah. insecurities, my own fears that I, uh, other people kind of picked up on. Sure. And they thought, okay, she's talented, but she's not a strong leader. 
right. you know, or, but, but some of those things, when I just stepped into that role of leadership yeah. and stopped feeling like I don't have what it takes and I'm not strong. And, and I read every John Maxwell book I could find, yes. you know, learn, cause I didn't really have to learn to, uh, to learn how to teach people how to sing or even worship. Mm. I had to learn how to lead people. Right. So I had to put aside all of my preconceived ideas about, but I'm young, but I'm a female and I'm leading, uh, you know, all of these men who are musicians or in my choir, I had to just forget all that because my husband would always say, none of that matters. People are looking for strong yes. leadership. Yes. They don't care if it's a man or a woman. They want you, whoever it is, just be strong. We'll follow you. Right. Just give us somebody to lead, you know, just lead. That's right. And I realized that it was more of my hang up than it was anybody else's. Uh, absolutely. I think a lot of it's in, in our head to some degree. Yeah. And it's, we put our own barriers around us right. based on where we feel like we are either valued or we're gifted. Cause yeah. the truth is when you strip away all the other external excuses, well, I'm a woman, well, I'm young. Right. The reality is you don't know how, right? <laughs> I, know. I didn't know how I knew that I was called, but I didn't really know how yeah. to, to step in. But I, I think for me, I struggled with somehow I was supposed to come to the table with all this knowledge and all this understanding. Right. And I, I would say, hold on, I would say this, get knowledge. Yes. Go to school. Get information. There mm -hmm. is a lot that helps you out there to be yeah. a great leader. And the truth is, this generation, let's oh, be honest. the resources. There, it is a little bit different than what we went through. However, because we were talented and we both were anointed, yeah. we were, and we were willing. That's the other thing. We were just willing to do anything, anywhere, anytime for the kingdom. We just wanted to be at the church yeah. serving. We just That's wanted right. to be full-time in ministry. We didn't know how it played out. But I think when I look back on those early days, there weren't as many barriers in my way as I thought there were. There really was not. And there, there, there was really just more people, like you were saying, like Danny was encouraging you, just step into it. Yeah. But today, we have even more voices yeah. that try to hinder why we can't do something. It's true. It, it's wrong. And Mary, you know, it's interesting to me because I just, that question you asked me kind of triggers all these memories because I worked with men right back in those days, and even now I do, but when I first got started, that would, some would be very overbearing or some would test the limits. They would yeah. try to intimidate me. Just a few, not a lot, not even most, just a couple here or there. And depending on whatever position they held in the church or in yeah. the ministry or the leadership team that I was on, and I would get so frustrated. It's because I'm a woman. It's because I'm young. They wouldn't treat you this way to, to my husband. Uh -huh. He said, oh, yes, they would. Yes, yeah. they would. They're treating weak leadership like that. Right. It's up to you to step into it. They would treat me the same way if yeah. I was leading the way you were. Oh, absolutely. And I remember the story you told me years ago. It helped me so much when you were leading the choir and Steve was back in the back green room. Oh, my God. Tell that story. That is hilarious. Which one? Are you talking about the one where he said, you came back and, and, and you I complained were about somebody complained about was getting on my nerves. Yes. And I was really struggling because this person was extremely male chauvinistic. Okay. Yeah. I don't even like to use that word because most of the men that I know that are in my life have been in my life have been the way. opposite of that. They don't even think in terms of gender and leadership. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But this particular young man really struggled with my leadership. And I was done. I had complained. I told Steve over and over again, I can't deal with him. He never listens to me. He shows up late. He doesn't care what I say. He makes <laughs> fun of me. He mocks me. And if, he, if, you, if I was a man, he wouldn't do that. And Steve said, I am so tired of you complaining. Go out there and tell him what's what. Yeah. Go out there and deal with him. Right. You're the leader. You're in charge. Go out there and do it. And if you don't, I will. Mm. And if I do it, that is definitely going to undermine your leadership. That's right. Because he, then he is going to think this girl can't handle it on her own. That's right. And I was not a confronter. Confrontation right. was not my thing at all. I just wanted to sing and love Jesus and lead people into worship. <laughs> I didn't want trouble. No trouble, please. No trouble. But I remember thinking, nope. And he, there was a part of him that wanted to go out there and fix it. Yeah. And I said, I got this. I got it. I got it. I can handle it. And the truth was, I really can look back and see that the Lord put that personality type yeah. in my path, as the Bible calls sandpaper. Yes. Okay? And I, I see now that that was there to refine mm -hmm. 
my leadership abilities, that I could speak up, speak the truth in love, be the leader that God called That's me right. to be, refine my leadership skills, and run a great team. That's right. And I remember back when we first started our church, and I would call and t- just complain. I would talk to you about somebody that just was annoying me so bad, somebody yeah. that was so hard to lead, somebody that just would not take correction. And I would go, I don't know what to do. And you say, Oh, you mean that person that's going to make you the great leader you want to be? Yeah, that's right. Oh, you mean that person that's that you it. don't want to deal with, but that's the person that's going to put some hair on your chest, yeah. that's going to make you <laughs> bold, and it's going to put the steel in your back to yeah. where when it's time to really lead the people that God's right. going to send you, you can do it with strength. That's and right. I think so many people, I don't think it's just women that do this. I think it's people across the board. It's hard sometimes. And in this generation, we can yeah. talk about that too, leading yeah. The younger generation, because I was the younger generation a long time ago, but we not came that long up, ago. You're right. Not that long ago. No. A, a little bit ago. We should edit that part out. <laughs> Let's start here. I was part of that generation. Just a few moons just ago. Just a little bit ago. Just a few nights ago. But, I, but being, you know, in my 20s and my 30s, but I don't remember yeah. the, the, just the mentality towards church and ministry and serving the way it seems to be now. Yeah. It seems like that this culture comes for what we believe scripturally is what God blesses. Right. Just the attitude and the heart towards serving yeah. is what gets God's attention. Now it's almost like well, that's toxic. Yeah. Now that's, oh, you're over loyal. If you're hearing thunder and lightning, that's, that's the Holy Spirit that's the anointing. filling the room. Actually, the it's anointing. raining outside. So no, that's, that's okay. That's the anointing. What are you I mean, about? that's the anointing and angels wings. Um, <laughs> And just clapping for us. You're doing so good, girls. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that's something that, you know, pastoring has really opened up for me. Because, you know, I was a, a, a gospel artist. I still travel and sing. And we just did some a new record. And it's all exciting. But pastoring is a totally different animal. Right. I mean, it takes a different skill set. Oh, my goodness. People yes. don't love you. They love you. They appreciate you, but it's not like when you're, you know, done with a concert after an hour and they're all waiting in the lobby to take a picture and tell you how great you are. No, I, I mean, pastoring is a whole different thing. And we're, you know, we hear this language that's kind of creeping in, you know, to, to our churches. That's really uh, the language that's, I hate to just say the language of the culture, because there's a lot of different cultures, but the mindset of right, today, right. you know, of, of what's your value, know your worth, know your value. And, and are you, are you finding, you know, are you, are, are people, are you valuing people enough? Are we right. as leaders? And I'm like, what? I think I am. Like <laughs> I've given my life to leadership. What more yeah. value? And the next generation that's coming up, we're trying to teach them to be strong. We're trying to teach them to, to lead, even correct people, even because right. we had to be corrected. Right. We had to, to sit under authority and be corrected in the moment. And there was some harsh leadership sure. when we were coming up. And we had to learn that that wasn't to hurt us. That was to really help us. Absolutely. And that we could overcome whatever came our way. And that made us more resilient and made us better leaders. Well, I think, too, one of the things that we struggle with throughout whatever generation you're in is that in order for me to get where I need to go and what God has for me, I have to know what it is he has for me. I have to... Um, fully live in that lane and everything has to align for me. All the relationships, the word team, I've got to have my team. Right. I've got to have my perfect scenario. All that's got to just be perfect in order for me to fulfill my yeah. calling. Yes. And that can really creep into a narcissistic yeah. way of servant leadership. Yeah. And we, we've spent a lot of years now where we're serving the world. And I believe in serving the world. I believe that we are to feed the hungry exactly what the Lord tells us, the word of, word of God tells us to do. But we kind of grew up on a language of serving the church. Yeah. Serving the house of God, serving the people of God. And there's a balance. There's a healthy balance. And when we talk about being women in ministry, first of all, trying to compete at all to be like men is such a waste of time. A trap. And I heard a girl say one time in, in my church, and it was just a drop the mic moment. And she said this, she goes, my mama used to tell me, and it's so good. A woman acting like a man is a terrible waste of a woman. Wow. A woman acting like a man is a terrible waste of a woman. And I segued into this part because you were, you were talking about adding value Okay, so when we think of the, in those terms and that language today, how do I add value? It puts 
the emphasis on me, on right. my personality, on my gifts, on my talents, me, right. me, me, instead of coming to the table saying, well, I don't know yet. All I know, I just, I just want to serve. I just want to be used yeah. Yeah. wherever, whatever you can do in me and need me to do. I'm That's here. Good. I'm not trying to figure that out first. Right. I'm not trying to figure it out from the standpoint of what gender I am. Right. And what that affords me because I'm a girl and I'm the, the role model that I've seen of worship leaders that are female are Hillsong female le- worship leaders or Elevation female worship leaders or, there, you know, there's more men doing this and there's more women doing that. The truth is God does not work within the confines of what our expectations are or our boundaries are right, right. or our genders. God does not work within that yeah. flow. Yeah. So when you fully come to the table, whether you're a guy, you're a girl, but we're, we're talking a lot to women, I think, in ministry. Yeah. And, and if, if you're a guy listening to this and you have a wife or, or a woman in your life that's in ministry, make sure she listens to this because we know what it's like to feel really inferior. Yes, Lord. Walking out our calling. We know what that feels like. Inadequate. And we don't yes. feel like we're prepared. And then the fact that we are women and you think, well, the men in the room are stronger. They're more equipped. Let me defer. And I'm married to a strong man, too, yeah. who's like, I don't need you to defer. I need you to step into the calling of God yeah. on your life. Go, Mary. Step into yeah. it. Speak what the Lord puts on your heart. And to fall behind, and I do the damage to myself. It's, it's what's happening on the inside of me. Right. But what, what then we do is when we don't overcome that by the power of the Holy Spirit and throw ourselves at the Lord and say, I am whatever you need me to be. I yeah. am whatever you say I am. Not what the culture says yeah. I'm supposed to be yeah. or even kind of what the system I'm in says I have to be. Right. I am who you say I am, yeah. not who the world wants me to be yeah. or what my vocal talent says I am or my age or whatever that is. I am who you say I am. There are absolutely no roadblocks. None. There is no position that God has for you that anything can get in the way when you have that heart. And you know, and here's something else I think that we need to come, we need to come for something because, you know, I know what it's like to be a creative. I know what it's like. I'm not a nine to fiver. I like to go with the flow. I love the, you know, just let's just let it happen. I've got a lot of people that are information junkies. I need to know what we're doing. That's right. I need to have, and in both sides of that, you can actually be so uh, in the mindset of deferring to other people. Yes. And it's really, you're deferring to them because you don't want to look bad. I'd rather, you know, as a female, well, you know, I, we make excuses. Well, you know, I I need to just step back. I need to, I don't, when really the truth is you might not just, it's, you don't want to look bad. Right. You, you, you want to be so prepared and so prepared that you're, that you haven't even left room for the Holy Spirit to do no, his best right. work. That's right. And, and we can make excuses. Well, you know, I, I've seen it so many times. People that are so talented, so anointed, yeah. so gifted, they never fulfill the ultimate calling of God on their lives. Yeah. And they blame somebody else. That's right. Somebody else didn't let me. Somebody else didn't give me the platform. Yes. Or I didn't really, you or know. I'll never have that because th- that's in the way. Or he's in the way. He's or in the she's way. in the way. Yeah. And can I tell you, that's selfishness. It is. That's selfishness because I, I love what Bill Johnson said in the book, Dreaming with God. Yes, it's, it's a plug. I read this book years ago. It changed my life. And he said, in our quest to make it, uh, what do you say? In our, in our quest, edit, in our quest <laughs> to make it all about God, we've made it all about us. Oh, yes. Not, wow. not a, it's not me, Lord. It's all you. Right, right, None right, of right. me and all of you. None of me. Instead of saying, no, God, all of me That's covered right. by all of you. God doesn't need to not use you. We've used this language, you know, none of me, God, none of me and all of less of me and all of you. I get what you're saying, yeah. but sometimes we can hide behind that right. oh, and sure. not even be active in what That's God's right. called because faith and your gifting is active. No, it's active. It takes, I, I just believe this. If you're not a little sweaty on a Sunday or when you're after you're ministering, like I'm yeah. not talking about real sweat. I mean, like you go home knowing you've been wrung out, yeah. knowing that you've left it all on the table. You've not made any excuses. Y- you know, God, I left it. I did everything you've called me to do. And I'm a little exhausted. Right. You probably haven't pushed yourself up. You know, it, I think it's more of a fight against our flesh 
than what we think when we step into the arena. We step into that place of faith. You know, we we hear that phrase, step into the arena. We've been saying it differently. You step into faith. Yes. You step out of fear and you step into faith. You take action. You step into that gift. You you don't allow the gift to just stay dormant. And you're, it's not going to be perfect this, no, no, the no, first time no. you sing prophetically or this, the first time you play, um, uh, 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 the first time you play your guitar right. well, whatever that is, you have to, you have to harness it. I remember the first time I was, um, traveling when I first started traveling, I were going, I was, I was being invited to these churches, you know, all over the country, little small churches. And God's so smart because he knows, let me, let me let you practice you know, behind the scenes, I'm going to let you get all your wiggles out and all the things out. And I remember I would just feel this prophetic ability. I would just start laying hands and and prophesying over everybody in the room. Like I, and the Lord says this about you and Liz says, and I, I, in the moment I was like, this is God speaking through me. I would go home and for a week, I wouldn't want to come out of hiding. For a week, I would I would activate. I would be, and I knew God had called me to speak life, and it was encouragement. I wasn't trying to say, you know, God's calling you to Siberia, right. but I would, in, you know, God is 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 speaking to step into that growth. Whatever it was, it was always exhortation and encouraging the words that God would give me for people, and I would come home and I would fight my flesh. I would want to just hide. I would feel so, why did you do that? Just like this accusatory spirit would come on me. You, you are off, you know, you guessed most of that, you know, that was all emotional. And I'd say, God, I'm not, I'm not doing that again. The next time I go out to minister, I I'm going to sing and go sit down. Right. I am not. And every time I would feel God's unction, just this prophesy, speak life, encourage, and I'm telling you, I would get beat up. And I remember I talked to mom about it and she'd pray for me. And then a pastor friend of ours, I talked to him one day and I was crying. And he said, it's spiritual attack. Yes, absolutely. The enemy is is trying to, it's like a, Elijah running from Jezebel. Yeah. You're breaking, you know, generational curses off of people. You're bringing life to people. You're, you're, you are confirming God's word over people's lives. You better believe the devil's going to attack That's you. Right. And it set me free. I never realized that me stepping out of my fear and into that place of faith, there was a whole kind of a principality that I was right. taking on. Absolutely. But once I realized to throw that off, I'd have to throw those thoughts off. I'd have to rebuke those thoughts and say, God, if you put that in my heart to do it, I'm not shrinking back. That's right. And it's been years of fighting that fight, right. fighting my own fears, fighting my own inadequacies, fighting my own limited uh, ability or limited mindset and, beliefs, and fighting the right. enemy. Right. That's that's caused me to be stronger. Yeah, and I, I think you know when you're when you talk about those those battles that you have out that you that you fight when you step out by faith. There's not a person on the planet that doesn't have to fight that fight. Yeah, when you step out by faith, you have to begin to exercise that muscle. Spiritual strength is is required for you to continue to walk in what God's called you to. And fear is a real thing. It is. And then the enemy partners with your fears. And then they can turn into excuses real quick when you don't want to step out by faith. Yeah. And I've watched it even in my own life. You just said that perfectly. I took way too long to say it. You just said it perfectly. Well, it's all right. It was really good. I I had all that time to listen and (laughs) gather and edit my thoughts. Can I tell you, though, um, our kids are in ministry with us. They're all serving alongside of us. And we're, hopefully they're grateful, they say they are, that they have us to process those types of experiences through. And we can almost catch it before it happens. We yeah. can tell them on the front side, be ready for this, which is what we're hoping this podcast is for you. Yeah. This goes with the territory. And if we're just speaking specifically to women, you have your struggles. But believe me, men do too. Men stepping out by faith yeah. and doing what God's called them to do, they're going to have their struggles too. There will be a spiritual battle. But as you overcome it, you start to see things differently than you saw them before. Yeah, And there, I remember when Stephanie started to lead worship for the first time without me. And always, I, you know, we trained our kids to lead worship right next to us. Right. And so I remember Christopher would start with me, and he was a whole nother level of, of teaching because I don't mean to throw him under the bus, but he knows it's true. 
when he was 15, I had him start leading with us on the main stage, and he'd led worship with the youth for a long, long time since he was in eighth grade. And I can remember we were leading worship, and, man, he was singing this song, and he's got his microphone, and he's looking good that day. And I, as I'm leading, watching him lead worship, and I'm next to him, I'm like, he's not, he's not leading worship. He's looking for cute girls. <laughs> for real. Yeah. And when church was over, I said, let me ask you a question. What were you thinking about when you were leading worship? I love this. He was like, what do you mean? I said, wrong answer. Because <laughs> if you don't already know what the answer to that is, that's right. I got you. I know I am your mother. I know what you were doing. And we were able, you both you and I were able to help our kids kind of stay out of those pits yeah. that we can easily fall into, that we get the calling twisted. That's right. Where we think it's one thing and then we sign up for it because it looks great. Yeah. Then we get in it and it's a whole lot harder than we thought because the battle's going to come. Yeah. Whether or not you know this is a real true calling or whether you're just playing. Yeah. The battle's still going to come. Yeah. And it can derail you. Well, so then when Stephanie started coming along and and Christopher, man, he did not want to be that guy. He certainly didn't want me to point that out or see that about him. So he really started shifting gears. I want to make it about the Lord, Mom. I want to make it about the Holy Spirit. So he, he got better. But then when Stephanie started leading worship, that was not an issue for her. But she had her other issues. Mm-hmm. And I can remember, I'll never, ever, ever forget this moment. And she tells this story, too, because now the Lord's really using her. And she's been doing some of her own interviews with radio and do, with her music. And she shares a story. But she said, my mom and I were leading side by side. And I was singing this great song. And I was so excited. Because here we are. We've been able to set our kids up to know who they are. And here's your position. Exactly. All right? We didn't have to fight for that. Right. They don't have to fight for that. And as she began to lead worship, man, she's, she is knocking it out of the park. It's powerful. It's at this great crescendo. Well, it's at the moment that I'm supposed to walk up and take the service. Mm. And as I walk up, she's <laughs> out front. As I walk up, all the worship leaders know, whatever pastor walks up to take the service, we all take a step back. Right. Well, when I went to take that step up, she did not take a step back. <laughs> girlfriend just stayed right where she was like she was going to keep singing this song because it was so good the people needed more and I stood there and it was awkward as could be and everybody else on the team dropped their heads like oh this is not good (laughs) the body language of that we all knew but Stephanie did step back and the spirit spoke to me and said you've taught her how to take authority and step forward but you have not taught her how to take a step back. Come on. And it is as equally important for us, and ladies, listen, it's not because you're a woman that you need to know how to submit and take a step back. It's because you are a servant of the Most High God. That's right. Men need to learn how to submit. And for us as women, it should almost come a little easier for us. Yeah. Because we are women, and we have a different DNA, and we have a different spiritual calling. Take a step back. Yeah. More often than you have to be heard. Because let me tell you something. If you take what Martha just talked about giving prophetic words that she she didn't want, Mm -mm. she would cry in a fetal position and go, I'm never doing that again. But yet she would walk in the anointing and that the propulsion from the Holy Spirit, the unction, you've got to speak the word that I've given you to speak, would overwhelm her. She'd walk in it, but then she would have these overwhelming feelings. Well, that's the spiritual battle that she's got to come in. That's right. So you better not ever go in your flesh. Yeah. Because if you go in your flesh, you won't be willing or able to fight that battle. It'll manifest in something else. And I love that you're, you're, you're teaching your children this and your adult children. And I'm teaching mine as well, because I have like our mother has years on us to see the fruit. She's way ahead. And now 15, 20 years later, from those moments where I would go into churches and minister and lay hands and then come home and lay in a fetal position and say, God, I reject this gift. This is too much. I can't do this. Just the mental frustration that I would feel, the second guessing, you know, just the fear that would overcome me. Now I can see 15, 20 years later, the emails, the, 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 the phone calls that now with social media, the people that have reached out and said, 15 years ago, you prophesied mm. a baby and my child is 15 years old. Wow. 10 years ago, you prophesied right in that season where I was afraid to step out, yeah. afraid to do it, but I did it anyway. 
I have seen confirmation after, I, I, I can't even count yes. people that said, I had cancer, you laid hands on me and you spoke life into me and I was healed or your songs ministered to me. So I've got, and you do too, I've got years of, of being able to see yes. the other side, the fruit of it. So now I don't question it as much. Now I go, that's just part of the battle. And then teaching our kids that. And I loved what you said about, yes, let's be bold and let's step up. But authority is not authority if if you don't know how to lay it down. That's right. So you can... And defer. Yes. Defer to other people on the team who have authority for this place or this moment or this position. You know, why why is it that when we do have a gifting or a calling and we, we... we better know that we're gifted and called yeah, to ministry. That's right. They go hand in hand. Um, but everybody seems to, and we're talking about in, in leadership and in music, okay? That's what we're talking about. Everybody wants to be on the platform or sing or be used in some big way that has notoriety. Right. And yet no one wants to be hidden in the back room yeah. taking care of the kids. Right. You know, everybody wants to be on the platform. Nobody wants to be in the toddler room. <laughs> Right. I mean, and I understand that the toddler yeah. room is the hardest ministry in the whole wide world. That's right. the hardest ministry. But the reality is that's where the most blessing really is. We think it's with a microphone in our hand. We think it's I've got to fulfill. I got to do my thing. This circles back to the first thing you were talking about in the very beginning about it becoming more and more about us. Yes. And we don't want to dog any generation. We really don't. But it is more self-serving. We have technology that's self-serving. We we have processes now that we're digesting and we're learning, but our kids have grown up with yeah. that really do just kind of overfeed and stuff you with more of yourself. Yes. I mean, with filters, just yeah. filters alone. And I think it's so funny that I've not been to a church, our church has them, you have, you have them, that we don't have a photography team. <laughs> We have a photography team. Yes. If we if we had a service without a photography fe- the, <laughs> team, heads would roll on Monday. Uh-huh. Where's our pictures? Right, right. So we can post. And and there's nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. But there comes a time when we really need to strip ministry down. And God will humble us. Yeah. To what it is really all about. It's about those people walking in those doors. Yeah. It is not about how we look in the perfect picture, in the, in the perfect posture. And I don't care if you're a man or if you're a woman. I don't, I don't care what gender you are. The posture of your heart needs to be, it is never about me. It will never be about me. I am just so honored and privileged to be used. That's right. So I, why in the world would I add to all the other struggle, the yeah. spiritual battle, my own expectation yeah. of how I'm supposed to be used and how I'm supposed to yeah. be acknowledged and th- that these these. Things should not be in my way I, because I'm a woman. No, right. don't even entertain that thought. Yeah. Because here's why. God can take you from right where you are, and we've seen him do it, where you are hidden and unseen and take you all the way to the front yes, of the can. line yes, and put can. a microphone in your hand and say, sing. Yeah. And you don't even ever have to ask for it, just like <laughs> he did with King David. That's right. And you and I, over the years, Martha, we have hashed this out over the phone for hours at a time when we didn't have house cleaners and we were vacuuming our own uh-huh. houses. That's right. Where we would say, Lord, we, you know, we, one of us would start angry and mad. We call the other one with, I'm so sick of it. And the other one would kick in yeah. and encourage. And we had our mom and we had our sister that would always keep us balanced. Yep. Thank you, Lord, that they refused to ever fan the flame of yeah. our own ego or our own expectation. That's right. Because expectations, especially false ones that have been set up by the social, the social expectations will destroy you. Yeah. And we mean that. That is not an overstatement. Yeah. It will make physically make you sick if you set yourself up for your own expectations of what you're supposed to be. That's why right now, Martha, all of this labeling and and um, identifying. Yeah. That's so destructive. It is. There's not even words to describe. First of all, the reason that I don't get twisted about all that is because it's not going to last. No. It will literally consume itself. Yeah. It isn't sustainable to indulge on what I'm feeling or what I'm thinking or what I'm identifying with in the moment. This is another whole nother podcast. <laughs> I get it. But and I'm not even talking about what's going on in the world with all that. I'm talking about how your soul can feed on that. Yeah. Your soul can feed on me, my, 
what I feel. Yeah, yeah. I can't because I feel this. I have to because I feel that. Feelings and emotions are fickle friends. Big fat liars. And big fat liars. We don't go in the strength that we have. No, no, no. We go in the strength that we get from the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And I, Gideon couldn't have done what he did without going no. in the strength that, that no. he started with it himself. But by going in the yeah. strength that he had, he was partnered and empowered by the Holy Spirit. He had to be stripped completely away from 30,000 to down to 300. Gideon. That's right down to 300 and then God gave them a strategy that made no sense that's right and that's what God wants to do and you know we're going to wrap it up because we're actually going to keep going because we got another week to do but we're going to kind of break this into two weeks but I as you're as you were talking I was thinking you know what should we do we should pray for people we should encourage people we should say you can do it God's gonna you know help you and you've got what you do and you know what I don't want to do any of that I don't want to do any of that because sometimes we can we can in our quest to make it all about God we've made it all about us yeah and we've got to break this oversensitive sensitivity. We've got to break this oversensitivity to our own flesh. Well, yeah. I got to make sure that I'm ready. And I don't know if I'm ready. Listen to me. Yeah. Just jump in. Right. Sometimes you will find that all the things you were worried about will fix it. I let somebody pray and lay hands on me. You don't need that. Yeah. You just need to be obedient. Just show up. Just be consistent. Be there. Show up. Be a part of it. Invite yourself to the yeah. thing. Yeah. Like, how? Where do you need me? I got a mop and I got a broom. What do you need? Yes. You know, I've got a, I've got an ability. I'll, I'll, I can preach. I can sing. I can clean a toilet. What do you need? Yeah. I'm showing up. We've prayed enough. You've been prayed over enough. Step out in. I wanted to. I, I, know I know that sounds. I know we're closing this segment, but I want to say one thing. What? Okay, because I got to plug our family podcast. But there's a reason for it. I have a podcast, too, with my entire family called The Family Business it's awesome. Podcast. And I encourage you, especially either if you work with your family in ministry, if you work with your family in business, or you just want to have a strong family, this is one big part of our family. Yeah. Stop making excuses based on your birth order or what you have or what you don't have or who you think has more than you. Quit that yeah. and just step out and be yeah. obedient to God and right. do the small thing. Be faithful in the small thing and let God exalt you. And we talk about it as a family all the time. It's always kind of at the core of our conversations, which we talk about a lot of different things. But the truth is that needs to be at the core of our hearts yeah. as believers and as Christians, whether we're serving in ministry or not. Lord, I'm going to show up. I'm going to get over my excuses. That's right. And you're going to do incredible things in my life with my faithfulness. Well, I'm, we're going to, listen, you guys, I, I know that this sounds crazy to not say we're not going to pray for you because we're always praying, but it's time to s- stop just, just praying and start pursuing. Yeah. J- don't just pray, start, get up and put some action yeah. behind those prayers because yeah. faith is action. And again, in our quest to make it all about God, we've made it all about us. Yeah. And we've got to be aware of that. So come back for part two.